my good memories too that I had growing up was when Yo MTV raps, when Ed Lover would play the 900 number, my dad mm -hmm. always came in to watch because he liked the music of it. And then he thought Ed Lover mm -hmm. was funny or whatever, but he was actually drawn to the music that you, you know, through sampling and building that track the way that you did. So what, what, uh, effect did that did the Ed lover dance and them using that have on your career or your visibility well um a lot because it, it was on television a lot a lot and i would i better say a lot <laughs> but you know yeah, a lot okay yeah gotcha and did you um okay so back to Taking it then to Queen, taking it to Queen Latifah. You trying to get me in trouble, right? You trying to get me in trouble, right? I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, with with Latifah, you know, you had had success with Wild Pitch and done several records through them, you mm -hmm. know, with Lati and, and Gangstar and stuff, and then like him Shabazz on Tough City. What made you guys go with Tommy Boy for Latifah? I think as I started doing more and more um, um, records. I started to know more people. And I, who knew me? Russell Simmons hooked me up with Dante Ross. And then Dante Ross hooked me up with, um, with uh, B -B -B Tommy Boy. With Tom Silverman? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And then uh, with Wrath of My Madness and Princess of the Posse, since you brought up Dante Ross, I noticed he's listed as uh, mixing on there. Do you remember, um, you know, his, like his skill? Cause he's obviously very skilled a and r and talent scout and, and working with artists over the years, but then also mm -hmm. he's done a lot of production with stimulated dummies and stuff. Do you remember early on in the studio, like recognizing his skill or, how he stood out? Um, not that I was actually looking for his his those those um things about him. I just you know if they was there, I guess I, I really didn't notice. You know. Okay. And then what about Latifah? What made her? <clears throat> what made Wrath of My Madness and Princess of the Posse so special early in her career? Hmm. I think just luck. I, I really think a lot of the stuff is luck, you know. I know it might not be the answer you want to hear, but I can make something up, but I think it was, just, you know, oh, man. No, I mean, um, I think, I think too. I, I, of course, I would say, I would say I like the music, I guess. She, she's going to say she liked the rap, you know what I'm saying? Don't say going to say, oh, well, you know, I like how, how we push that song. Everybody, you know, Somebody gonna say, oh, well, it's the way that we put the records in the box and ship them out. You know, so everybody, you know, that's working on it is gonna say, you know. And I, I did, I'm the only one to go and say it was luck. God did it. I, but um I, I think the beats. When are the, when is the music get special here? <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know. Fair enough. But I think it's I think it's good you're saying luck because a lot of times, and you and I both know this. No, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. That's why I would say luck, because I, you know, and it seemed like uh, some people think there's an answer for everything, Mark. You just don't want to admit it, Mark. I know the answer. So I, I let them tell it. I let you tell it. You know, I don't know. Well, yeah, a lot of it is circumstance. And happenstance. And right, people, I, I don't know the answer to that, huh? No, I think people, people don't want to admit it. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. No, you're right. I think there is a lot of that to life. You know, yes, you have to be talented. Yes, you have to have the records. Yes, yes, yes. But then you also have to be lucky. You have to have the opportunity. If you if somebody else gets the opportunity, congratulations. And you know. There you go. Okay. So then, uh, <laughs> okay. 
with uh, Pure Righteousness with Lakim Shabazz, um, prior to a lot of, uh, prior to that album, a lot of this stuff was more uh, with Lati, Gangstar, even Latifah per se. It was a lot more of, um, I guess, braggadocio. And that one was a lot more political, of course. So did you, uh, on, a, on a production? Yeah, no. uh, I'm sorry. Well, we, well, what they said came out of their mouths. I just did the, you know, I just did the um, the music and what they said came out came out of their mouths. So it's, it's on them, you know, All right? Because when um, nobody really was cursing until NWA started cursing, you know. So you know, yeah, yeah they definitely... nobody wasn't cursing that much. Yeah, it, right. they would sprinkle right. it in. Right. Right. They would sprinkle it in, but not yeah. not to that magnitude. They laid it. They cause they were thick, you know. They laid it down thick with their um profanity, very, which I like. I I like it, you know. I I thought it was cool because, but um, hey, okay, and it's so, good luck they knew how to curse, right? <laughs> right? There you go. Good luck, you got it right. But as you were uh, developing as a producer, um, did you find yourself approaching making songs different for singles than you did for, say, Pure Righteousness, where it was like an album, or was it the same process? Um, singles? It's basically the same process. Yeah. And what, what is your process to make a song? Like when you're doing a song for La Kim Shabazz back in the day, what was that process? What did you do? Basically, back then, it seemed like um, somebody, somebody said um, every record has to have a hook in it. So 16 bar hook, 16 bar hook, 16 bar hook. I really think um, Curtis Blow, to get the record on radio, they, they turned the, the rap record into a song. They put it in song mode. Which is sixteen bar, you know, hook sixteen bar, eight bar hook, eight bar hook, eight bar hook actually. But um, you know, for rap records, you know, that became um, sixteen bar hook, sixteen bar hook. I never really liked hooks that much, but the record label, a lot, most of the record labels, you know, there's a way things should be done, and. They had to go, you know. I remember the first time I did a um I think I could have been one of the first people to change all the music in the um remix. I think I'm I think I might be one of the first people. Because I was trying, I did on microphone thing and I tried to change all the music. No Mark, you can't change all the music, Mark. You gotta use some of some of the old stuff that was in there. That's it. All right, and I went back in there and I added. You know, I put some more stuff in it. I remember one time I did a remix for somebody. Um, and I took out the people that's in, in the band, right? I took their, their stuff out. Not knowing who played what, you know what I'm saying? So I think it was a guitar player. It was George Duke and Stanley Clark remix, right? I don't, I didn't know what George played. I didn't know what Stanley played. And those were the two elements I took out of the mix. Mark, you can't take them out. I said, oh, okay. So, yeah, they went back in. <laughs> yeah. Oops, made a boo boo. Well, it sounds. Yeah. Like so, you know, um, it sounds huh? like you preferred producing, yeah, was more than, pr producing more than remixing then. I like producing rap because it's easier. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah, much easier to me. Um, let the rapper do do um do his verses, then send send it back to me, and I could I I can finish it up. But that's how I would do it. Um, now that's how I would do it now. But um, gotcha. Yep. <laughs> okay. And then I, I actually forgot the last thing you said. Go ahead. No, it's all good with uh, Gangstar. Mm -hmm. 
since you did multiple things with them, uh, also in 88, I was intrigued with moving on because that uh, sonically is a lot faster. The drums are a lot faster and he raps, Guru raps a lot faster, which is something that mm -hmm. he almost never did in his career. So, um, I, I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you, um, I couldn't tell you too much about gangster uh, music, even what I've done. It's been 30 years. I, I gotcha. You know, I could barely tell you the stuff that people did. That basically, actually, you know, yeah. Fair I listen to Steely Dan now, man. I'm damn near 60 years old. Okay. And what do you like about Steely Dan? No. I don't know what I must have been listening to Earth Wind and Fire. Um, there's more records I don't. There's more records I don't like. No, there's less records I don't like than I do like with with um, Steely Dan. Actually, yeah, there's a lot of records I I love. Yeah, by Steely Dan. Okay. And this, I, I don't know. I guess it's, it's just a coincidence. But um, yeah. Okay. Now this. Oh, what else? So, since you yeah, since you asked, so I don't usually listen to other things. Um, I I like music that came out in 1976, and I like musicals. I like orchestras. Uh, yeah, 70s sound. Yeah, music. Yeah, usually turn me on. It, it it works now with with the production, I guess. Knowing those going back, yeah, I think I go back a little bit further than the people that that do the same thing I do. I'm I'm older, not going back. I'm just older, so yeah. Yeah, I know. I I know more television programs. Let's say that. Probably yeah. Okay. Yeah, more white television programs. There you go. Yeah, definitely. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was. I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.